Good morning. Thank you for inviting us. Oh, buenos días. Muchas gracias por invitarlos, por invitarnos. And now I have a project in Haiti. So, bonjour. It's just the only word that I learned. But in the future, I promise that I can do something better. Well, there are a lot of scenes that we can talk today. But to start, I'm going to, to show you the project that is called Mano a Mano. This project was done in Chile with Chilean women and was the cultural adaptation of CEPA study, which is one of the main from El Centro. And also, this uh, project Mano a Mano is working with minority women, where women that are having a very low income in Chile, and you know, they are suffering a lot of uh, health disparities. So the name of the study uh, that finished last year is Mano a Mano Mujer, Mano a Mano Women, uh, an effective HIV prevention intervention for Chilean women. And this was an R1 that we, uh, I got for five years and just finished uh, last year. People who participate in this grant were Dr. Ferrer from Chile, Dr. Peragallo, who is the, the creator of CEPA and also who is the PI of El Centro, Dr. Nor, who is from the University of Illinois at Chicago, and Dr. Michael Murray, who was my mentor when I was doing my PhD, and, and unfortunately, she passed away. <clears throat> so what is nice from this project? This project is, is a collaboration between three universities. Pontificia Universidad Católica de Chile, University of Miami, and University of Illinois at Chicago. So this is Chile, where the study was done. Don't be so excited. It's just this line. <laughs> I like to show the map. Look like it's, you know, a huge country, but in the reality, oh, where am I going? Back, back, back. OK. In the reality, it's just this part, and we need the study in Santiago de Chile, which is the, the capital. So to talk about HIV, probably many of you know the number of cases. In 2009, we had 33.3 million. I was reading new publication that we are now close to the 40 million. Plus, there are still coming new infection. So it's not that we have, you know, control the epidemic, the epidemic is still. Uh, and now what is very important is women. Women is comprising in Africa 50% of the population who is living with HIV. In other countries, it's not 50% yet, but we are seeing that the number of women who are getting HIV is increasing. For that reason, this project has a lot of significance when we start with this in Chile because, you know, we are talking about the year 2004. So when we were trying to work with women in HIV prevention, really nobody understand why we are working with women. You know, everybody was thinking it's a young disease or is this disease close more to people who are homosexual. So at the beginning, when we were inviting the women to participate in the study, they say, HIV? Why? So we need to explain <coughs> why we want to, to, to work with them. So during 2000 and 2008, the WHO report that there was like a situation where not too many cases new are coming. However, that do not happen, didn't happen in Chile and in Latin Caribbean countries. You know, we have in Latinos countries and in the Caribbean problem with, with statistic, with report, how prevalence or incident is report. So sometimes the numbers that we get are not real, showing what's, what is happening with the, the epidemic in the country. So. In Chile, the number of infections are continuing continue going up. So it means 
that the campaigns that were done by the Ministry of Health has not been really very effective. Remember that also we are uh, a Catholic country where the church has a lot of power, especially in the media. So sometimes when the government was trying to put more clear information about what's going on with the, the disease or you know, trying to explain people that uh, condom use is, an is the best alternative, some of the media cannot present the, that uh, campaign because the church didn't allow it, uh, to present that, that information in the media. In Chile, sorry, I, I don't know why the last line was not in there. You know, in Chile, in 1986 to 1990, the proportion of men to women was around eight to one. And now it's four to one. So it has been an important change in the number of women who are acquiring the disease. Okay. You know, there are, there are some studies done in Chile, but really they have not been published. So the one that I'm going to present you, this, this study, that, uh, was accepted last month in the Healthcare for Women International, which I think is very important because we are presenting the entire study, the result, and the, the, strate the strategies that we need to continue doing in Chile. So if you, you have interest in what I'm going to talk now, probably in three more months, you can see in, the, in that journal. So what is the objective of this presentation? Is describe the impact of mano a mano mujer and HIV prevention intervention on HIV related knowledge, attitude and behaviors for Chilean women. You know, I remember uh, when Dr. Peragallo was developing CEPA, that means salud, educación, CEPA, prevención y autocuidado in Spanish. She developed CEPA to be used with Latino women that were living in that time in Chicago. And the majority of them were women coming from Mexico or women coming from Puerto Rico. So that, that was the idea when Dr. Pregalo developed the intervention that after years we translate or we cultural adapted to women in Chile. So, there are a lot of biological component plus sociocultural component uh, in the Latino women. When, I, when I'm talking about Latino women, I'm talking women who are in US and Chilean women who are also Latino women. So we share a lot of commonalities uh, with, in relation with culture factor. We have problem with uh, power, gender power, we have a lot of problems with poverty. We have many women who are not being able to work because husbands are not allowing, allowing them to, to work. Uh, we have domestic violence, like domestic violence considered as part of what is supposed to happen in a marriage relationship, where women sometimes they are not calling the police because they don't want that someone hurt their husband. So, you know, we have a lot of uh, different factors that are interconnected when we w want to have a group of women to work with them. So, as I told you, gender inequality, poverty, ah, and of course, the perception of not being at risk. Why I am risk? I am at risk if I have a, my husband. So, why I can be at risk? See, my husband is with me. I'm, I'm, I'm in my house every day, you know? So where can be the risk? The, the, the women are not seeing the potential of that they, their husband uh, are having other relationship outside of the marriage. However, many of them know, they, they knew that their husband were having other relationship outside of the, the marriage, but you know, because money for the children, I'm not working, they don't say anything and they stay in their relationship. 
but the association with that and the possibility to acquire HIV was not made by the women. Even though some of them know that their husband are having uh, some other relationship. So we, we also mentioned, uh, we, we work in machismo and marganismo during the intervention. We, we use, I don't know if you know, maybe it's a Mexican women, Lara Cantu. She has a very, very nice instrument to measure machismo, marianismo, and, and if I'm not wrong, also uh, familismo. So we use her scale to determine how much machismo mar and marianismo <coughs> was present in the daily life of the Chilean women and how much that changed after the intervention. Uh oh. Uh oh. Sorry, <laughs> I did something. Yeah, fortunately. Okay. So, associated with cultural acceptance that men will engage in high risky behavior. You know, in Chile there is, I don't know, maybe in, in other countries, I, I, I'm not, probably, because in the, when I was talking with older women in, in Miami, they were saying the same thing. Is you are, you are a woman who are having a multiple partner? No, is you are, if a man is having a multiple partner, macho, good. If a woman is having more than one partner, prostitute. So, you know, you can, you can see how, how is the approach to gender from, from the community. So, because this cultural specific factor make married, uh, very difficult to the women talk about sexual issues, about pleasure during the, uh, during the sexual, sexual relationship, to talk about condom use or, or to prevent uh, sexual transmitted disease or, or HIV also was not you know, a dialogue that is commonly present in Chilean women. So the majority uh, of the articles that, that you can read in relation with HIV prevention, many of them are using the, the Bandura or the social cognitive um, theory that stress in peer group, and they say that they are one of the most effective theory to be used when we are trying to prevent HIV for women and men. So we use that for, for our intervention, and also we use the primary healthcare model that the, the WHO is, is having, and that was the beauty of the, the adaptation of our intervention that was that we incorporate what SEPA had from the social cognitive learning theory plus the primary healthcare model that was used, used from one of the professors from the University of Illinois at Chicago. So we use both models in the, for the intervention. Well, many of, of you know this, that the learning theory of Bandura identify the performance of a behavior as a function of the outcome. It's a out positive or negative outcome, and also has a lot of to do with self-efficacy. How much I'm be able, be able to do a behavior, so if I'm confident that I can do something, that I will have a good outcome, that probably I will adapt that uh, behavior plus the entire sociocultural factors that are around of these women. For example, we use, for the self-efficacy, we use the true rehearsal role modeling and supporting during the, the focus group where a lot of uh, demonstration, a lot of presentation, we bring models, and also something that was very good was the support the peer, the peer support in the group. That helped a lot to uh, have a very good outcome in our study. So 
what we did to adapt the study. We did, without the intervention, we did a lot. First, the intervention was professionally assisted peer group intervention. You know, at the beginning, the idea was to use peer education. So we are going to work with a group of women, we are going to train them, and they will be the women who are going to be in the sessions teaching the other women. So what happened? We start with phase one, that was the qualitative study. This one. We, we invite group women, we discuss the intervention, we present the intervention to the women, and when we ask how you will feel if some of you can be the peer who are going to work with other women in the community. And they said, no. We want to have someone with us that is a nurse, is a physician, a nurse midwife. So a people who really know more than us. Even though we try to, to tell them that the other person will be trained, you know, as, as we are for that topic, and no, they prefer to have someone who they, quotation mark, respect. So we decide that, okay, if we cannot going to use peer, some of us, we are going to lead the intervention, the intervention, but also we have a peer like helping us. And that was perfect, worked very well. And you know, there are a lot of meta-analysis study. It's like controversial, the result that they have. Some of them say that the peer group education is the best one. Others now are saying that, you know, maybe depending the characteristic of the community, maybe for young people is better. Uh, but in this particular group of women, 18 to 49 years old, was not Chilean women, was not what they want. Probably, you know, the culture that in Chile we respect a lot the people who work in the health community, in the who are professional. That can maybe has an influence that we are very paternalistic with, with the people that we take care. And, and you know, physicians and nurses, psychologists, or other healthcare workers are very, we have a lot of power in some sense when we are working with, with people. So what we did, we trained nurses psychologists, and they were the, the people who ran the session. After that, we analyzed the difference, uh, having groups who were training with the psychologists and with the nurses, and we didn't have uh, any difficult. Well, we were uh, doing evaluation permanently, go to the session and, and see what's going on during the, the, <clears throat> the intervention. So that was the adaptation. Also, we interview community leaders when we were in, in this phase, in the phase one of the grant. Community leaders to see how much they will support or how much they think is important that uh, uh, we should start with HIV prevention. We interview like the police, the chief of the police, of course the priest, the Catholic priest and the uh, uh, evangelic priest. Uh, we interview, who else, at the mayor of the community where we are going to do the, the interview. Because, you know, if we are going to a community where the, the mayor is not giving your support, it will be so difficult to uh, Im implement the, the study. So based on that, plus... Uh, when I did my, my PhD dissertation, and I also was doing a, a mixed methodology study, so I work with women, I interview them, and also I apply different uh, instruments in relation to domestic violence, knowledge about HIV, self-efficacy to, uh, to talk about condom. So we have also a lot of information here in relation with, um, with Chilean women. You know, it was a very nice uh, doctoral dissertation, but I used mixed methodology. Oh my gosh. It was very nice, the result, because what Vicky was saying is true, that when you ask questions in a questionnaire, 
everything is fine, they answer very good questions, you know, but when you start to talking with them, things were different and open, open my mind about what is, is really needed for, for these women. We have the same experience when we were doing the stigma study that Vicky was mentioned. You know, we were talking with the healthcare workers and asking them if, uh, how they perceive stigma in the healthcare center. No, 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 they said at the beginning, you know what, we are not stigmatizing anybody who's having HIV. We are open to all the people. We don't care if they have HIV, we, we receive all of them. Okay, when the, when the conversation was, you know, more warm, that we were more in uh, confianza, each other, one of them said, but you know what? Really, if I have HIV, I'm not going to tell any of my co-workers because I don't want that they uh, stigmatize myself. So I said, oh, wow, this was different than they were saying at the beginning. Also, one of them uh, was saying, but you know what? We are taking a lot of... Um, good measures to avoid that uh, people who are having HIV can come to us and we can infect it. I said, okay, like what? Well, immediately when the person arrives, if he has the, the ID that, they have an ID that is said HIV, but it's for them, the first thing that they, they should do is show the ID to us. So we are going to inform immediately everybody in the center. Interesting, well, it was, you know, like, okay. Um, they say other thing that now I cannot remember, but, but you know, when, when we first start, everything was perfect. But when we, we go more in depth and more in depth, new things were coming to the, exactly to, to the, to the area. So that, that was very bad. Oh, I remember. You know, also we did observation with that group of healthcare workers when they were taking care of the people to see a universal precaution and was very funny because I was sitting in, just in the corner like that, like invisible. So at the beginning, everything was perfect. Like the first 10 patients that they see, they saw were perfect. The syringes in the box, everything was perfect. Do you know, I was thinking, be here, people are not going to do things wrong. But you know, after a while, after a while I, I was really invisible. So the, the syringes were start, instead of going in the, in the safe box, they were in the trash can. Many of them were not encapsulated the, the needle, just like that. So, I, and you know, it was a very strange situation because I was sitting like, like everything is perfect. But you know, things are not at the first information that we receive. But if we spend time to analyzing and looking more in depth, new things are, are coming. And we use, as I told you, the SEPA intervention for Latina women that Dr. Pelagala at that time, she has um, implemented in, in Chicago. If you have a question, you just interrupt me. Or if you don't understand, because my accent sometimes is not clear, I can answer in Spanish. To me, it's easy. So what we address in the intervention? We address a specific cultural factor, like machismo, Marianismo, and familism. You know, I'm talking about negative aspect of machismo, but there are many, many papers that also look machismo um, uh, as a positive factor that uh, can help the women to prevent also HIV. You know, like um, men is in charge of the family, I will do whatever I can do uh, to have you, ha to, to you have everything that you need. I, I will care for my family. So that are positive thing that maybe also can be used in terms of HIV prevention. We really, we didn't explore that. So I don't know, but you know, they will have a very good result, I think, 2011, this year, the same intervention that I'm showing to you was adapted for men. And they are in the, there was also another one that is Dr. Ferret, the API. They are finishing this year. So we will have, you know, a lot of, a lot of new information. I forgot to tell you when we did the adaptation also, we interviewed in the first phase, men. 
And you know, that was very funny because when we send the grant for the NIH and when we receive the, the approval, we need to explain something. One of the persons who reviewed the NIH grant was saying, why are you giving too much power to men asking about HIV prevention among women? I think that that's not a good point. Like, you know, if we are working with women, we need to, to talk with them, not with men. But the other reviewer from the HIV, they found that really that was an asset, was a good idea to know what men think about HIV. And one of the interview, many of the men, you know, we interview many, around 10 men. When we were asking about HIV, we said, what, what do you think about HIV? Ah, they said, or, or sexual transmitted disease. And they said, you know what? That's, that's women's fault. They are not taking care of that problems. So, and we say, okay, the, so will you be inclined to use condom? No, that's not our problem, it's women's problem. They are so disorganized with their sexual life. I said, <laughs> you know, th that was difficult to, to, to hear without putting any face. Okay, oh yeah, yeah, and we were taping, but that kind of thing that were, you know, uh, we didn't expect. We assume that men know that they are having some disorganized sexual life, and no, 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 it's us. It can be a combination, you know, but that was uh, something that also was incorporated. Mm, okay, and, and as I told you already, we incorporated respeto. The group that we have, they were eight to 10 women, sometimes plus the kids, because they don't have where to leave the kids, especially where, where it was vacation time, time for the schools. So sometimes was, you know, crowded the places. And this is the, the intervention that we adapted with the, the Chilean uh, community. So, the first intervention, we were talking about HIV and AIDS among women in general, but specifically about what's going on in their community. As I told you, they didn't, they didn't think that HIV is a problem for, for them. So it was like, wow. To them, it was very, very strange to know that some, some women can have also HIV. We talked a lot, and this was very, very funny, about meat, and they, they were telling us what they know, what they think, what they, they have hear about uh, meat, about HIV. We talk also about HIV prevention and testing. We were trying that uh, they can go to a special place to be tested. The majority of them, they never went to the place. So we use presentation, discussion, role, role play, and videos. The section, the second one, was understanding human sexuality and HIV and STD risk. We used the model, many, many human model to discuss HIV. And, and you know, also we, we use like the same, the same slide that Dr. Pragalo was using in, in Chicago that I think were taken from a, a, an infectious disease book. So we're really showing infectious disease like um, condyloma, but they having, you know, a lot of, like a cauliflower. So we use really strong image, but you know what? That was very hard for them. It was like the only way that really they understand because, you know, you never see sexual transmitted disease as you can see if you have an inflammation in your mouth, you know? We, they know that they have a secretion, but it's not something that they really can see and touch, if I can say something. Many of them, they, they can have a sexual transmitted disease, but they never really know, except for some symptoms that they, they, they must have. So we use that for the, the sexual transmitted disease. And we use also for the study that we are doing in older Hispanic women. You know, I'm talking about women f between 50 and the older ones, 76. All of them sexual active. But many of them, they didn't know anything about the sexual transmitted disease. So that also, you know, like put the red flag, 
these are all, are all the Hispanic Latino women that live in Miami. Many of them coming from Cuba, um, Colombia, Venezuela. I think that that was, was the majority. So also sexual transmitted disease was very important for older women. You know, in my, my assumption, I was thinking maybe they will be boring talking about, you know, sexual transmitted disease. At the contrary, they were like, they need to have more, more, more information. Myth and misconception about condom and how to use female and condoms correctly. I, I need to tell you this. You are going to see, to see that um, and in some, I'm, all, I'm older women, part of that study, but you know sometimes I'm, I'm like a, a child that I want to play with something. I bring a huge ba box of condom. I bring the condom, I, 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 leave, I leave the condom in my house. So this was last week, two weeks ago. The condom were called like premium. To me, you know, all the condom, they are hard, different color, different taste, but all of them are the same. So one of my son, who is 27 years, told me, wow, mom, why you have this condom that are extra large? <laughs> so I said, extra large? I was thinking all the condoms are the same. No, ma'am, these are extra large condom. Wow, I said, so I need to bring this condom to work with older Latino women. Yeah, but they told me you need to bring like normal condom. Okay, so I take in consideration because I said maybe they know more than myself about condom and characteristic and quality. So I bring a, ne a new box to my house from then to go to the older Hispanic women. So I put them next to the premium one. This one where condom, the color was black. So they said, wow, ma'am, you have a lot of different ideas about condom. I just, want, I, I just want a normal condom because now they are going to start with the color. So I arrive to the, to the uh, intervention with the older women and I bring both condom, the premium and the other one. Surprisingly, the women start to ask me about the characteristic of the condom that I didn't know. So you know what I did? We said, suppose that these are extra large, extra resistant, the, the premium one. So we, t we opened the condom <laughs> and we measured the condom. We, we wear the condom in our hand. And you know what? Both condoms were the same. So when I arrived to my house, the, uh, I, I told my kid, you know what? The, both condoms are the same. And they say, wow, mom, it's just only the media. Yes, I said, so don't tell me that, of course, they need to use premium condom. That was they were telling me. We, these are the condom that we use. But you know, it was just, just a marketing. Both condoms were the same. And we wear the condom here in, in, in the hand. Perfect. Look, look exactly the same. No longer, no more resistant. Everything was, was the same. So we have a lot of fun with the older women, you know. It was, I, I was very engaged with them because I was part of, of, of the group in terms of aid. So that, that was something that we did with Condon, uh, that, uh, not here in SEPA, <laughs> but with the, this group. Uh, ah, female condoms. You know, we incorporate female condom when we did the study in Chile, but really, really, it was not very well accepted. Uh, everybody know uh, <coughs> female condoms here? You know, I don't know what I can tell you. I never tried, but just the idea to, to use it, the women were reluctant in Chile. They didn't like it, uh, looked like too difficult to use, you know, it's not comfortable. However, the older women that we have in this older study, older women study, they love it, the, the female condoms. They really love it. Because they said that to use condom with older men is difficult. Because sometimes the erection that older men are having is not good. So they cannot handle the male condoms. The male condom pull up, se sale. So they found that to use female condom 
for them will be a very good idea. And you know, the, the female condom, like, they are like um, a plastic. It doesn't look like the, 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 the same characteristic that the, female con the male condom are having. And I, the, I say, yeah, I know that look like a plastic, but it's, it's, it's a good measure to be used with, by women. And you know, one of, them, one of the women said to me, but you know what? If you use the condom, the, the, the sensation of plastic will change. Why is that? Because inside of the body is having a different temperature, so it will be more soft. I said, wow, that's, you need to call the company and tell them to put that in their advertisement. I never think that, and that's true, you know, when the, the condom is inside of the vagina because the temperature change, probably they will be more soft and don't have this sensation as, as plastic. Okay, I have been talking too much. So, also we, we were working about uh, in physical well-being and physical health. We incorporate uh, self-esteem, depression. We talk a lot about depression. We have a different exercise video. And, and we finished with the last session trying to encourage women to change some of their habits, have some of the, the, the previous situation that they had. And you know what? During the, the, the intervention with women, the Chilean women, there was a lot of, how, how can I say, change in their life that at the beginning we were like surprised, especially women who, are, who know that their husband and having like a, multiple partners, many of them like talk with the, bring the husband and talk with them like very clearly. Some of them, they leave the marriage. Some of them that were never worked before were working. Some of them that they didn't finish the school because the husband didn't allow them, they returned to the school. So were not only changes in HIV prevention, but also they were changing in their own life. Like they were empowered to feel that they really, they really have a value, that they are a you know, person, that they can take decisions, that they can do more for their life. Some of them start you know, learning, for example, costura or, or other technical thing. One of them was uh, finishing and studying like LPM. So there were a lot of changes in the life of, of, of the women that I think, you know, were more that, that we were measuring in the, in the, with the instrument that we have. And, and someone suggests, I don't remember who was, that we can ask for another student, a study, Last, like try to, to talk with these women now, like do a qualitative study and see what really is going on with that women. How the separate intervention or the man-on-man -man intervention uh, changed their life, which can be, and in terms of the IRB, when, when the women sign the IRB, we ask if they can be uh, called to participate in a new study. So in that sense, it will be just something that we can do without too much problem. Oh, well, this is, this is a picture of some of the place where we were, were doing the, the intervention that you know where any place in the community where we can have a space. We were in the municipality, we were in the healthcare center, we were working in, um, I don't know how to say in English, Alcoholicos Anonymous, they have a room. We were in there so around the community where women can go in easily way. So what we used for this study, we used a quasi-experimental design. We didn't random the people, what we random were the community. So community one will be the intervention and community two was the control group. Why we did that? You know, we were afraid about contamination because having people from the same community, we are sure that everybody will talk about the intervention, which, which was a good thing. But at that time, we present uh, to the NIH, and they were fine with that. 
So we conducted the study in two communities in the southeast of Santiago, poor communities. We used 10, 10 healthcare centers, five in each community. From that place, we start the recruitment. And also we use um, like snowball sampling that they were telling a friend, a friend was telling other friend. So we were having a lot of people coming to there. So we have Chilean women as inclusion criteria residing in one of the two communities selected, 18 to 49 years old, and reporting that they were having sexual activity in the last month previous to the study. That were the, the requirement. And, and as I told you, we use flyers, it's, but the snowballing was the best for us. You know, that also was a problem with the snowballing because we find we screen 835 women. From that, almost 60 percent meet the the criteria to be to participate in the study. What's happened with the other? Some of them were older. Some of them were younger, or some of them were not having sexual activity in the period that we were requesting. So we we finalized with uh, 496 women that meet the, the criteria, and we had 244 to the control to the intervention, and 252 for the control group. You know, you can read here everything. I, I cannot read it. I know. <laughs> I was trying to make bigger, but it was too much. But here, you know. 835 women, these were the women that participate in the study, and we finished with 218 women in the control group at the three months follow-up, and 182 women in the intervention group at three months follow-up. Mm. So we have here Three months follow-up retention. retention was 80% in the, in the control group and 70% in the intervention group. You know, we have, we use multiple strategies to retention. And, and the big problem that we have to have the women participate in the, in the intervention is that where if they, if they receive an offering of job, they cannot say no. You know, they were working like housekeeper or cleaning office. So they were jobs that they, they cannot negotiate a lot. Like say, no, I, I cannot go today. I'm going to the, to the intervention. And, you know, at that time, we didn't offer the intervention during the weekend, for example, or in the afternoon. We have the intervention in the morning, Monday to Friday. Situation that changed radically. Radi radically? that changed a lot, it changed a lot, with men. The study that is <coughs> running now with men is mainly, mainly done, done during, the after, in, during the evening and during the weekends. Because men, supposedly they, all of them are working so they cannot go during the day. So that was something that we need to have in consideration <coughs> for, for future study. Well, we offer compensation for participation. And, and you know, we were any place where the women can, can be to ask the, the follow-up interview. Sometimes we were to the house, sometimes we were to, to the health clinic. We, we move around them to, to really have the, the follow-up and, and to, to, to have the, all the women answer the follow-up. We, 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 we gave in, uh, incentive, you know, we gave $10, was, yeah. Nothing, I know, nothing, $10. So I think that it was not just the money that made these women participate in the study, it was really more than that. And some of them, they were asking, why are you paying me if you are giving me so much? So was, um, so we have the, the approval, the IRB approval from the Pontificia Universidad Católica de Chile. I told about the compensation and I told already about where we collect the data. So the interview contained in close and the question and we assess a baseline six weeks and three months follow up. That was the assessment that, that we did. 
and really for the analysis, we use the best line and three months follow up. So we, we, the variables that we were measured, some of them were sociodemographic, we have HIV related knowledge, we have attitude, for example, positive aptitude to, living, to people living with HIV, perceived barrier to condom use, self-efficacy for HIV prevention, behaviors, HIV reduction behavioral intention, and in the HIV redu reduction beha behaviors, this one were more attitude, but in behavior, partner communication, condom use, and also in mental health, we measure self-esteem and depression symptoms. Some of the scale that we use, I didn't want to, to put all of them because there are many. We hope that you know the HIV behavioral knowledge scale, the Hegman, self-efficacy to condom use, communication with partner about HIV and STD, perceived barrier to condom use, the Laura Cantu scale, perception of baumarianismo and machismo, the Rosenberg self-esteem scale, and we use the CE as D for the depressive symptom. We analyze the data from baseline, we compare it three months follow up, and we use multiple regression analysis, ordinary less, really, least square regression for continuous and logistic regression for the categorical. And in the regression, we control it for baseline, score, sociodemographic information. I don't know if you can see it, but I can, I can tell you. Here we have the sociodemographic characteristic, the intervention, and the control group. The mean of age of the women participants were 33 years old and 32 in the, in the control group. Year of education was significantly different between the intervention and the control group. That was one of the demographic that, uh, because you, you can see here in the intervention, 33% of the people are having elementary, uh, only elementary school, but in the control group, there was less, half of them only have elementary, meaning that the majority of the women were having high education level. High school, 50% of the women in the intervention group, 60% women in the control group. We have also technical and university uh, degrees in our, in our study. The, the income, when we talk about low income, you know these women earn per month $80. And this group earn $110, which you know is very, very low. And we are talking about monthly household income. It's not that the, the women is earning that. It can be the total amount of money that they have to survive with family and with kids. Living with partner, 72 and 75% of them live with, with a partner. 55% in the intervention group were Catholic, and 61 in the control group were Catholic. Also, we have differences in, in the insurance that they have. We have public, Chile has a mixed, mixed system of, of health. It's a public and also it's a private. Generally, the people who are less income are going to the public where, where they don't need to pay anything. People who are having more income are going to private insurance. So public 66% and in the control group 87 the one that are in the private sector are the one that employ, uh, employers are paying the insurance for them. For that reason, they, they and unfortunately, in the, in the intervention uh, group, 20.25% are no coverage, which is a lot. You know, it's almost uh, one fourth of the, of, the, of the study, that 25% of the study that they didn't have uh, insurance. Okay. <clears throat> Here we are, the result, because everything sounds good, but what, what really happened in there? <coughs> okay. 
as you see here in the table, we have significant change in HIV knowledge at the end of the intervention. So group in the, in the intervention group acquired more knowledge than group who were in the control group. Attitude toward people living with HIV, also we have a significant differences in the intervention and the, con and the control group. And you know, attitude to people living with HIV, we create a measure that was, for example, asking, are you be comfortable living with someone who has HIV close to you? And at the beginning, many of them, they said no. Are you willing to, for example, take care of a person who is sick if she needs your help, knowing that the person has HIV was no. But it was more like no, no, knowing that really, you know, discrim discrimination. So when they, they learn about the different characteristics of the HIV, I think they open they, they, they mind to, to accept more, more, more of them. We didn't have change in behavior risk perception. And, and that, you know, is very close related with culture. So it was something that we didn't obtain changes. Perceived barrier to condom use, also we didn't have significant change. Also we can assume probably something relating with culture. I, I'm not sure to say that, but, uh, but intention to reduce HIV risk behavior. We have significant change. People increase the intention. So they want to do something, but there is something that in the middle, some factor that we didn't know what is, that didn't allow the women to arrive to the final action. Uh, I love this one, partner communication, which you know, we have significant difference between the group. I think that that was fantastic. And the, the, the material that we, we gave to the women has a lot of things to do. They said, you know, when they arrived to the house, sometimes they didn't have anything to say to their husband because they were not working and the husband was working, so he arrived and nothing. But now they have the mano a mano, uh, uh, we, we give um, flyers, to, no, no flyers, handout. We, give, we gave handout to them, so they sit next to their husband and start to talking about that. And the husband were listening because it's not something they are telling. It's something that someone who know was telling them. So that was very, very good. And we find a new strategy now with the older Hispanic women. The, the Florida Health Department had a set of mini clips, mini clips videos with famous people that are known in the Hispanic community. Like singers, for example, we have a I don't know if you know Paulina Rubio. Maybe, maybe you see in the, in the TV that very short, two, three minutes uh, video that the person is talking about HIV. Just very, very short message. We use other that is the, the a father, and Coutier, remember, the, is, is one of the fathers very well known in Miami. And many of singers and, lo and people who are working in TV and radio, and we gave that to the older women. You know, they love it. They open the video and they show to their husband, to their friends, to, to the daughters. They say, I never, I never talked before with my son about HIV. And now I'm talking to them and I'm talking to, the, to also their classmates that are coming to the house. Because they have something that they can show that you know is clear, they trust the people also. We, we look uh, like respect in that. Self-efficacy on HIV prevention, also, we, we have a, a significant change. Condom use, no. We didn't ch have change in that. So something also we need to address in that that is not showing real action. In. Surprisingly, we also 
had changed in depressive symptoms according with the CSD scale, but we didn't find changes, found changes in self-esteem that we, we were expecting that we, we, we can have some new good results in that. So implications. The mano a mano mujer intervention is the first intervention specifically tailored for Chilean women that has been shown to be effective in changing knowledge, attitude, and behaviors. Mano a mano mujer prevention intervention can be a model that can be effective in addressing the HIV epidemic through Chile. Because we have uh, mano a mano in women, mano a mano men, we have mano a mano for um, uni uh, students who are going to, to the university. So look like, you know, having this can be used as, as a model in Chile. Funding from this study provides further documentation for the urgent need for more prevention intervention in Chile, especially for low income women. You know, what, what's the problem with people who are from high, high income that we don't have the information? So maybe also it's a huge problem among people who are having more money, but sometimes the diagnosis of HIV is not released to the authorities because they are going to receive care in private setting and probably they buy the medicine. So it's, it's something that we really are not sure what's going on in the in population in other socioeconomical level. Working with women, low income women and their family is a key element for HIV prevention in Chile and we hope that if we can make more adaptation, maybe we can move with this uh, intervention to other Latin American countries. Also, HIV prevention and the related issues of sexual health should be addressed broadly in community, school, church, and families. We know church, Catholic church for us is a problem, and Catholic, but it's a problem in, 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 in the mean that we cannot really talk openly about condom, for example. So that I know is, is, is Catholic school are not a possibility. Church also uh, are not open the Catholic Church, so maybe we need to start, you know, building trust with the <laughs> priests uh, in, the, in the Catholic Church. And you know, uh, the Catholic University was the place where the study was done. So it's like, but we need to to do a lot of negotiation before we can done uh, the study in there. The, there is the president, and the person who is coming after the president is uh, the archbishop. The archbishop. So I talk with him a lot of time, and, and you know, at the end, I, 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 I think that he was tired to having me, and he said, okay, 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 Rosina, do your study. But I don't want to see you in the newspaper saying that the professor from the University of the Pontificia Universidad Católica is giving condom. Okay, I said, okay. But he, he said, you can do whatever with you want when you close the door. So I mean, you know, I, I work with the women without any problem. Also, healthcare providers need to take the lead and facilitate this program. And as I told before, this intervention may be used a model for reducing HIV in other Latino countries. The good thing is that was a model bring from CEPA that was already in place, and you know that give to us a lot of strong to our uh, intervention. Questions? You know, because um, I don't know why we did six month uh, follow up assessment. Because the, the, the information that you are giving to them is fresh. Six week follow up was immediately after intervention. So we want to know how the, the changes or how the, the outcome are prolonged in the time. If ideally, I think that we would have like six months and, or nine months. 12 months is difficult to get the people again. For that reason, thinking how much the, the, the changes exactly are. are and, and you know, there are some articles that also are, are proposal, proposing that we need to have a booster session, like three months follow up, a booster session. To, That's why I was asking about. You know, it's suppose there is a separation, 
between the state and the church. However, specifically in Chile, I think not any government, the government were not to have a fight with the church. So, yes. Yes. I know, I know. But you know, I, I, I think, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think that that was, was still more, because remember that we are at the end of the war, you know, located. So it takes time for us. <laughs> Changes. Thank you. Thank you.